While I'm writing this from the point of view of a Dartmouth medical student, I'm sure that this primer will probably apply to any third year medical student starting their surgical rotation. This video will not be going over any pearls related to surgical knowledge, but more practical clinical advice. Feel free to switch to another video if this was not what you were looking for. If this is your first rotation, I imagine you're extremely nervous. And if it's your last rotation, you're probably still a little bit nervous, but at least have had the ability to talk to other classmates and realize that everyone made it out alive. One thing that will decrease your anxiety is knowing the flow of the day and what to expect. Basically, this flow of surgery will mimic any other inpatient rotation, as you're about to find out. Your day will start by rounding. Surgeons start early, and as a medical student, I'm sure you're well aware of this. Be sure to page the resident you'll be rounding with before your first day so you'll know exactly what time and where you are to meet in the morning. And make sure to find out whether this will be the same time and place you'll be meeting them every day. Surgeons are also punctual, so make sure you know where it is. You'll start off by rounding on all the patients that your service is caring for. This can mean patients as new as those who've had surgery overnight to those who've been hanging out on the service for the past few weeks. Rounds are short. Any presentation will just include the important overnight events, vitals, eyes and nose, physical findings that are pertinent, and possibly an assessment and plan depending on your resident. But you should be sure to check with your resident as to what they expect from the medical student. There may be very little discussion about each patient, and patient visits will tend to be brief. Rounds are short because the surgeons have to be done by 6.45 to 7 to allow time for pre-ops before the scheduled surgeries. After rounds, Surgeons will then head toward the pre-op area, where the patients who are waiting to have surgery are hanging out. The reason for pre-ops is to really just do a final check to make sure the patient is ready for surgery. This typically means making sure the patient understands the surgery they're having done, pertinent review of systems, quick physical exam, and a chart review to make sure everything is correct. This may be more or less involved depending on how familiar the resident is with the patient or how complicated the surgery is or sick the patient. Finally, the surgical site is marked and the resident and later attending will sign off on the patient for surgery. The next part is obviously the most exciting part of the rotation. It's being in the OR. Now, while it may be the most intimidating portion at the beginning, depending on the surgeon you're with, you'll quickly learn to adapt to the OR environment. There are a few things to review before your first day, such as run through your head, how to scrub in, practice your knot tying. And for each case, you should try to understand why the patients are having surgery a little background about the pathophysiology which led them to have the surgery, contraindications and indications for the surgery, the basic steps in the surgery, and possible complications. Please also take a look at our video on OR etiquette if you're interested in learning more about the nuts and bolts of being in the OR. When I was a third year, I was on a very busy surgical service, which meant I was typically in the ORs during the afternoons, as well as the mornings. However, on the few days I was not in the ORs, I spent the afternoons helping the residents and interns follow up on any orders or scans that were written in the morning during rounds. I'd also help them follow up on active patients that have surgical or medical complications or help them see new surgical consults. And there were also some nice residents that would also allow me the time to study depending on how busy the service was. Now the last part of your day is another quick set of rounds. This is usually done when the chief resident is finished with their surgeries for the day and just to make sure all the patients are tucked in for the evening and everything that needed to get done was done. Once you're done with this rounding, then you're pretty much home free. Congratulations, you've made it through a day of surgery. Now it's time to prep for the next day and study for yourself. Now, if you're watching this before you're starting your rotation, some things you might want to think about before the first day should include what types of surgeries might I be seeing tomorrow? You know, what types of patients are typically and currently on our service? And then again, prep for the surgery, as I mentioned back in the OR section. Now for the take home points. Firstly, take a deep breath and breathe. Everyone who's gone through third year medical school has survived this rotation. Secondly, prepare for your first day by reading about patients on your service and tomorrow's cases. Again, why patients are having surgery, background about the pathophys, indications, contraindications, basic step for surgery, and possible complications. A great bonus is practice your knot time. You want to look like a rock star on that first day because this will set the tone for the rest of your rotation. Paredly, prepare for the subsequent days by reading up on the surgeries you'll be seeing and pre-rounding on your patients in the morning. The typical flow again is rounding, pre-ops, surgery, follow-ups and consults, 
followed by rounding. Good luck and I think you'll do great.